Greetings, brothers and sisters. We thank God for you. We thank God for another day. We thank God for life, health, strength. We thank God for seeing us through dangers seen and unseen. And we are we are excited about this week and what this week will bring. And we just know that every day, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Thank God for you. Thank God for your being here. Thank God for just being alive. And the psalmist said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we praise the Lord today. And we thank the Lord today. Uh, David once said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. So we want to continuously praise God and not look at the circumstances all around us, but know that God is in control of the circumstances and the situations. And through it all, we must keep the faith. Um, I want you to remember our sick and shut-in members, those that are going through various storms and various challenges. Remember your friends Remember your co-workers, remember our church family. And as we say during the announcements, with a mighty roar, welcome to the Grove. So welcome to the uh, virtual worship experience that we have at Pleasant Grove. And it's not just Pleasant Grove, it's worldwide. And we thank God for the opportunity. We want you to remember our way of giving an offering through GiveLify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, GiveLify. Look up Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, and we are so grateful, so grateful for those of you all that have been giving via GiveLify. We want to stop and say thank you and express our gratitude because you didn't have to, but you did. And so I say thank you personally. We at the church also say thank you because um, of your steadfastness, because of your giving. And we thank God for the love of you giving. And we pray that whenever you give, be cheerful. For God loves a cheerful giver. Um, so we thank God for you. Thank God for your prayers. Thank God for you all who are participating faithfully. In the prayer call, we thank God for all of your encouragement, all of your um, thumbs up, all of your emojis of encouragement, all of your Facebook uh, gathering and saying wonderful, kind words. We thank you. Thank you. It is much appreciated. You are appreciated. You are appreciated. And we just wanted to express that gratitude to you. So remember our Givelify and remember our Tuesday and Thursday prayer call at 12 o'clock. And the phone number and information on how to come in on the prayer conference call is posted on our Facebook page. And we pray. We pray that you will be able to be with us. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Calling Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass 
eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, continue to be with us and guide us. Please remove all distractions. Let us be focused on the right now. And God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And every heart says amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. First Samuel chapter thirty and verse six. First Samuel chapter thirty and verse six. Uh, if you were not with us, or you didn't get a recap. Somewhere along last week, I spoke of being a witness. Be a witness. Be a witness. A couple of weeks ago, I said, "Be present." And I ask you this morning, have you been a witness? And this morning, are you present? Not just here, but present. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. 1 Samuel 30 and 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. It reads, And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This morning, I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I've asked you to be present, and you should be present during this time, during this moment, during this time that we share together, uh, in fully engaged in being present. And being a witness is something that you can do. And I want you, and I've thought about things, and thought about life, and all of what's going on around us, and God gave, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Again, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. The New uh, American Standard Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord. David found strength in the Lord. Encourage yourself. Again, our thought this morning is be encouraged. Be encouraged. So, David is a mighty man of war. David is a warrior. We first read about David, David who is the second king of Israel. We first read about David during the selection process. And when they were choosing the second king, David was not present. 
they had to go and get David because he was not considered even to look the part of king. He, he, he didn't fit the social order. He didn't fit the outward appearance because we have in our mind a certain look that we look for when we look for certain things. And David was not there. And when he was anointed king, and it was given that he was anointed king, we read about him again back with the sheep. He was a shepherd out with the sheep when the anointing ceremony happened, and then after, we read about him back with the sheep. And God is so wise and so powerful. Sometimes we complain about things, but your anointing and appointing don't always occur at the same time. You may be anointed to do something, but the appointment is not at the same time. The appointment may be to go back with the sheep. Think it not less than, but thinking at, think of it as a learning process. Not something, well, I should be, I should be. Sometimes we elevate ourselves too much when we should humble ourselves. David showed himself to be humble, and in a humble place, God can teach us, and we can learn so much from a position of being humble. Be encouraged. Be encouraged when you see others pass by, when you see others who you know that you have more education, you have more experience, yet they receive the promotion. I want you to be encouraged because God has you where you should be and where you ought to be and protected and covered and God is going to make a way out of no way but we need to learn that virtue of being patient being patient my brothers and sisters be encouraged be encouraged when others pass by you be encouraged when you sometimes are overlooked or ignored be encouraged knowing God knows who you are and God knows where you are. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. David was not at the ceremony, but God showed you God's plan is not like man's plan. So we see David back with the sheep. Then we hear, as we find on a few chapters later, David goes out to see the men at battle. His brothers are upset and consider him to just wanting to investigate, wanting to be curious. Uh, some folks would call it being nosy. Uh, David wanted to see what was going on. And he saw a champion called Goliath, who was a mighty warrior, talking and bragging and being braggadocious about who he was and how powerful he was. And no man would go down and fight Goliath. But we see David, who has the courage because he was where he was supposed to be in defending the sheep. And we see him go down and defeat Goliath. He got, gathered stones up and he slew Goliath where other men wouldn't. And from his ascension, Saul was jealous. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, everyone is not happy with your success. Everyone is not happy that you graduated. Everyone is not happy that you're happy. Everyone is not happy that you have achieved certain things in life. Everyone is not happy that you woke up this morning. Everyone is not happy that you were, God started you on your way. Everyone is not happy that God kept you in your right mind. So be encouraged to know God loves you in spite of what they think about you and how others feel about you. Don't let that dictate your being encouraged. So David has ascended to be and show himself to be a mighty man of war. But just like all warriors, just like all battles, just like all fights, if you fight long enough, you will experience defeat you will experience uh, trials and tribulations. In your life, you are going to face, I am going to face, we are going to face distress. We are going to encounter disappointment. 
we are going to encounter danger and we are going to encounter disruption of peace in this life in this life we will have tribulations in this life man born of a woman of but a few days and they are filled with trouble in this life you are going to face some crying moments in this life you will face some trying moments but I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. You see, if you read the scriptures, in verse 2, it says, when they were at Ziklag, verse 2 says, and had taken the women and captives and that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. See, the Amalekites were taking all of their, the children and the wives captured, captive to be enslaved. So, verse 3 says, So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Verse 4. Then the people, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And that's some crying right there. That's some crying when you're crying so long and so much, no more tears come out. No more, no more tears can come out. You just in a very low place. And I don't know about you, but even as a child, you can experience it. Even if you remember when you cried so much, all you could do is sniff. Tears wouldn't even come out. You'd just be sniffing. And, and, and you faced a whipping or was through with a whipping. Let me, let me straighten out. I, I don't have time to go. You don't want a whipping in. We have to deal with that later on. But be encouraged because those whippings encourage you to do right. A little chastisement. It never hurt. It may hurt for the moment. But oh, don't you thank God for the chastisement that you would receive. And when you cried, you couldn't cry no more. But some people, some people go through things that they cry until they can't cry anymore. They cry until they hurt. And they find themselves in a depressed place. Being sad so long, they find themselves in a dark place. And I want you to be encouraged. Some people in their homes with, surrounded by their ideas and by their circumstances find themselves where they're disappointed. Their peace is disrupted. But I want you to be encouraged. Notice the wives and the children are taken away. The wives and the children are taken away. And they're in their weeping and in their frustration, they look at David, who's the leader. David, it's your fault. And you know what we're going to do for you, David? We're going to stone you. And there's no hurt like when you're hurting and you don't have the answer and you can't get to the answer. And somebody, you will find that answer. And until you find that answer, someone is going to have to pay the price. And David, you're it. We're going to stone you. And everybody's upset with you. Everybody is angry with you. You don't have a friend anywhere. Everybody wants your head. Everybody wants to see that you are dead. Everybody wants to see your defeat. And David, you don't have the answer. And people all around you are saying, stone him. They Look in verse 5. It says, and David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him because the, all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughter. Now, David could have joined into the distress. You know how pity parties go when people join in. 
David could have joined in in being distraught because not only was their wives taken, his were taken also. He was a part of what had been, his family was a part of what had been taken also. They were distressed. And when you love people, you don't want to see them hurt. When they hurt, you hurt. When you love people and care about people, when you see them going through, you go through as well. David, the people were crying and hurting. It says in verse 6, David was greatly distressed, but I want you to be encouraged. It says, but David encouraged himself. And all of that, this mighty man of war, this mighty warrior, this one who had defeated Goliath, this one who was a champion, this one David encouraged himself. I love my family. I love my family that are, that are here with me and uh, give, don't create a whole lot of turmoil when I have to go running around and doing and um, being serving as a minister in different places and not grieving and not giving so much backlash. I love my family. My extended family are so loving. My cousins from all over the country are so encouraging, uh, so powerful, uh, so loving, so just, and I know I'm repeating myself about loving, but that's just one word that I can think of from here, my immediate family, to my family that's all across the country, just so loving, from Ohio to Philadelphia to Florida to Huntsville to Anniston to Piedmont to all where the churches where I've served, those are some beautiful people. But it's not their responsibility to encourage me. Because if I'm going through, maybe they are going through also. And we have to know how to encourage ourselves. You uh, may have a moment when you have to encourage yourself. And I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. This is what David did in being encouraged. Verse 7. And David said to Abathar, the priest, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod of ephod. And Abithar brought to him the ephod to David. And what does it say in verse 8? And David inquired at the Lord, what shall I do? And I want you to know, I want you to know, to be encouraged, you have to have that little talk with Jesus. And when you're, and you have to tell them all about your trouble. When you face moments that you have to encourage yourself, encourage yourself by talking to God. Get alone, get by yourself, and talk to God. And God will give you your answer. God, what shall I do? God will give you your answer. Be encouraged. Have that talk with God. And God will give you your answer. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I want you today to not bombard yourself with bad news, but be encouraged. One way I find myself being encouraging myself is as when Saul, if I could borrow him, he would say, go and find me that heart player. Go and find me that player, that, that person who can play. The music that is soothing. Sometimes you have to get you a playlist and just go down your playlist with some great and encouraging music. But for me, I find the scriptures to be encouraging. What scripture do you read that's an encouragement? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I find encouragement in the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I find strength in I will bless the Lord at all times. He's, his praise shall continually 
be in my mouth. I find strength in knowing and remembering the psalmist that said, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. I find encouragement in the psalm that says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help, and all of my help comes from the Lord. I find encouragement in knowing that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Be encouraged. What scriptures do you read? What scripture do you read that is a reinforcement to be encouraged knowing God is going to see us through? I was distressed, but God. I was going through, but God. I was disappointed, but God. Peace was disrupted, but God. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't be bombarded by all of the other negative news. Be encouraged knowing that God will see you through. God will see you through. And when God sees you through, thank God for all he's done. Today, simply be encouraged. Doesn't matter what's going on. Be encouraged. Sometimes you have to take this hand and pat your own self on the back because nobody else will. Be encouraged. Sin will lead you down a road of disappointment. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin will disrupt Sin will distract. Sin will destroy. Sin will destroy. I want you to be encouraged to know that you don't have to pay people back. You don't have to seek revenge. God will protect you. God will see you through. And if you read through this, you'll see that David was, a, was, was unique in all of this situation. Read it in its entirety, 1 Samuel chapter 30. For I want you to be two words. What is that? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. That is actively engaged in being encouraged. Reading, praying, and seeking God. There is a book that I read to that is very encouraging. It's called As a Man Thinketh. And the writer is a very old book, but the writing speaks about thought and thinking. And how do we think and how do we think and see ourselves? And I find encouragement in the reading. I find encouragement in knowing that others have gone through. You're not alone in what you're going through. You're not alone in what you've gone through. That's why it's important to be a witness. Because your testimony may encourage others. Someone may remember what you said that you went through. But ultimately, you have to encourage yourself. I want you to know your family may be huge and loving just as mine is. I love them. But it's not their responsibility to always be at my every breath and call. Sometimes they have their own families, their own issues. I have to know how to read the scriptures for myself. You have to know how to read the scriptures for yourself and pray for yourself and encourage yourself. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Find encouragement in that song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you for our encouragement. We thank you for being there for us. Let us be encouraged to run on a little while longer. Let us be encouraged to keep the faith. Let us be encouraged to know that the battle is not ours. The battle is yours. And the battle has already been fought. And the victory is already won. And we thank you it was won a long time ago. Let us be encouraged to keep doing your will. Let us be encouraged to know you will see us through. God, we pray for those that are, have experienced a disruption in peace. We pray for those that they are caught in sin, that they will be delivered from whatever sin has them bound, and that they will be liberated. God, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for being our Redeemer, as we can stand with the others who say, I know my Redeemer lives. 
God, we thank you and we love you. Watch over us and keep us. Make us better. Now may the grace of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth, now, and forever. And all of us together say amen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. God bless you. God keep you.